IBM spent a considerable amount of their life making typewriters. This here is one such example of their earlier products. This is the IBM Model B typewriter. It's still a very much manual device. It does have a corded power on it for an electric motor to speed things up a little bit for you. But other than that, um, sure, you might have the option here of a separate color. So you get two colors out of this, woo. But your type pitch is all fixed. Your font is fixed. And it's still the old fashioned style of mechanical typewriter. Now the Selectric would come along and it would add such benefits as correction, but on a device like this, either you start it over with your document or you use some sort of corrector to manually make that change. In the last couple of decades, however, IBM was able to computerize this entirely and you ended up with something like this. This is the IBM personal typing system. For example here, this is one such printer that you can attach onto this, and this here is an IBM Pro Printer 3. It's a dot matrix printer. It's not going to give you text the same as the original Model B, which is why IBM at the same time was selling a device like this, which was a daisy wheel printer. There's no keyboard on the front of it, but it gave you daisy wheel type text. Daisy wheel type text came on a wheel like this. It was, again, fixed pitch, fixed style, but you could change them out. In reality though, what you're looking at here, once I take this printer off, this is an IBM PS2 Model 30. I mean, look at the front of this thing. The power switch is the same, the floppy drive bezel's the same, the hard drive's the same, and internally, this is a PS2 Model 30 that's had everything rotated 90 degrees, so all your connectors are over here, and now it's just wider than it is deeper. And the little thing on the bottom here, that's just an extra three ISA slots, so you could add more expansion to it. Um, be it for some sort of external interface like a modem. But otherwise, this is a PC. It doesn't necessarily need to run IBM's word processing software or even any of the third party word processing products that were available in the late 80s by the time this came out. WordPerfect was one such example of a very powerful PC based word processing system. But I mentioned this thing over here once already could be used as for printing, and there was a printer interface that was available, but at the same time IBM was selling these computerized word processing systems, which were just a computer, they had these things. This is the IBM Wheelwriter 50 Series 2. This looks like a typewriter. It is a daisy wheel type system. Like I said, you can attach a parallel port interface to this and use it as a printer, but this thing itself is its own word processor. It has an Intel 8088 CPU. Uh, it boots from ROM into a word processing environment and it's the whole shebang. Why was IBM selling this at the same time you had this? Um, it's definitely not because of carbon copies or multi-layer forms. I mean, both can do the exact same thing. But for the remainder of this video, I wanna talk about this neat curiosity of a word processor, even if other people at the same time were making word processors equally as good. These really are fantastic pieces of equipment. There's no operating system to deal with. There's no funky configurations to deal with. Quite simply, you would come in in the morning, you would turn this thing on, and after a couple of seconds it takes to go and initialize itself, it will go right into its default state, and it's complaining right now that it has a low battery. And if I actually hit start recording on this here, there we go. What you're looking at on the screen over here right now is what you're seeing on the VGA output of this device. There's no fancy display on this here or anything at all. It just outputs to VGA. When you got this as a system, you got a little tiny monochrome CRT monitor, which either was sitting over here or it was over here on its own little stand. Of course, that was one of the first things that got, went missing off of this wheel rider when I got my hands on it. What a shame. So don't mind the ThinkPad that's sitting over here currently recording this all for us. Um, it's gonna be doing the job for us. The wheel rider has a sister called the IBM Quiet Rider. A lot of the functions I'm going to show you here today are like straight up identical on the Quiet Writer. And I'm not going to show you all the functions today simply because IBM's already done that for us. There's a fantastic video on YouTube uh, from IBM Marketing where they're showing off the functions of the Quiet Writer. And as a result, they're showing off the functions of the Wheel Writer. Let's just keep a note here, however. This is a later unit which has the VGA output and no LCD screen on it. In fact, on the front of the unit here, the key layout is a little bit different 
compared to previous wheel riders. We have no control panel over here, but we do still have our visual scale here and all of our other regular function keys. And loading it in is pretty straightforward. So you take a document like this and Tech Tangents pointed out these electronic typewriters don't have a hand wheel on them anywhere. So you would release your platen, you would release your, uh, your guard. I would insert my document on my scale and I'd also extend the paper holder. And then simply give it a couple lines here. You're gonna go in, right block platen, there we go. Speed that up, lock that in place, and we're ready to go. Now, because this is a wheel rider, we also have a correction system that's available in there, and that's this key right here on the keyboard. And when I use that, underneath the usual ribbon cartridge that we have for our type is another cartridge, which is the correction. So I can just hit the word, uh, hit this button here, and that'll go back and get rid of everyone, one letter at a time. And that goes away. But I can also use the code button and this, and it'll actually remove the entire word. It's very easy like that. We also have other built-in functions here that let me type whatever that I want. So I'm just gonna go to a new line here. So the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Now let's say I said Dob for some reason. So I'm gonna go back there and I'm gonna do B. No, oh, it didn't like that at all. There we go. And now I've made an error on that there, obviously. This has a built-in spell assist as well. It's just a spell checker for single words. So I'll do code spell assist. And it's busy over here right now. And there we go. I have my options. I can do dog, doe, don, dot, dow, or dab. Well, it's dog, so I'm gonna hit that. And what it did there is it corrected and then it typed it out correctly. The print on this here is very clean, I wanna point out as well, and you can change it. I've mentioned this before, because it's a daisy wheel printer, I can simply go in here and remove the cartridge, and this wheel here can be changed out with almost any other style of cartridge that works on these wheel riders, and you're done. Now, in this case here, I just changed out Prestige Elite 12 point uh, with another Prestige Elite. I don't have any other font cartridges for wheels on this thing. But you get the idea, right? So all of these word processing functions are built into the unit. Um, we also have the ability to store stuff. There we go, let it reinitialize. And so let's say, we're gonna do it again. Wop, no. And I'm gonna do store, type storage number, one, and off it goes. So now that's stored it internally into memory. And I believe, if I've done this correctly, uh, if I play it back, it will do, so play, uh, press storage number, I'll do one. And it didn't do anything there, okay. Anyways, what I was trying to get to my point here uh, without being fully trained on this typewriter is that there is a storage mode built into this. Now, you can have a whole bunch of ranges to store your various documents in, not just one page, not just one form. You can do multiple pages and multiple forms. But what if you have more documents you want to hold on to than you have actual storage in the unit? Earlier units added additional expansion capabilities in the forms of modules onto the backs of these wheel writers and uh, typing word processing, system, word processing systems. There we go. But this one doesn't have that. Instead, we have these slots that are in the back here one of these is going to be for your parallel port expansion, which converts the wheel writer into a printer. And as Tech Tangents has also said, that's a very difficult to find add-on. But we can't help but notice there's already an open knockout on the back of this thing. What the heck is that there for? Well, there was an option available for this wheel writer, the Series 2. This here is an external 3.5 inch, 720 kilobyte floppy drive. It takes standard floppy disks. But the idea here is that you could take this, you could put it right next to your system, and then you would plug your drive into the back of the machine. And then you could store 
thousands of documents, really an unlimited number of documents. You didn't have to save it to the internal memory, which on itself was at the mercy of an internal set of AA batteries. You can actually see on my screen here, it says low battery. I don't have batteries installed in the thing right now. When I do, they're hiding right here. But with this, I don't have to worry about the batteries dying and losing all my formatting, my documents and all that. I could just save it to a floppy disk and then I can store those wherever the heck I want. Or if I have sensitive documents and forms I don't want regularly being available to anyone who might type them out without my authorization, I can just take the disk out and put it somewhere secure. Unfortunately, this has been a deconverted unit. What does that mean? Well, there's an opening there. There's no controller for the floppy drive. The floppy drive has nowhere to plug into it. And that was a problem for me for a number of years here. And well, who deconverts a, a product like this? Again, except maybe someone who was doing leasing. Okay, sure, fair enough. But now I need to get myself that expansion so I could use the disk drive. I would like to really thank Christopher for helping me out with my little problem here. For he got in touch with me and he sent me this beautiful little care package of odds and ends. So what do we have in here? Well, we have this little tube here. Inside of this little tube, if I can open this up and drop it off, are a set of little overlays. What these are supposed to do is that on the front of the keyboard, we have a spot that fits these overlays right along in here. And by the way, I wanna point out, this one already says diskette over here. This is the product setup chart which came with this unit, and it does specifically say that the diskette was installed July 7th, 1989. So yes, again, this did come with it and someone took it out. But these little decals here go over there and they add, well, the same indications for our spell assist and for all our other controls there, but it also adds the diskette label on the far end. So we have a tube which contains those. We also have hidden away in here a set of documentation which tells us that installation instructions for this option are provided in the typewriter maintenance information manual as well as various war uh, warranty information. But what's this all for? Well, it's for what's inside this anti-static bag. So inside of here, seemingly almost brand new, I'm kind of amazed, is our missing floppy disk option. This thing is brand new. I'm just kind of blown away. Like we dig further into here and I have this little care bag here and inside of this contains our ribbon cables, our power cables, our screws, our grounding clamps. The whole thing is in here. So I'm now happy to say I can add the diskette option into this unit here. So then well, we're gonna do that right now. So let me just turn this off. At least the platen in that. I'm gonna pull that out and I'm gonna start popping this thing apart. Opening the Wheelwrighter 50 is not hard. Doing so without breaking these on the other hand is. I've already broken this one once before so it's already kind of jank. But how do you do it? No screws at all. Flip the unit over and you're gonna be finding there, there, as well as up here and here. There's a set of tabs. Just go with a flat blade screwdriver bend the tab back and then persuade it to open. There we go. There we go. There we go. And there we go. And now carefully lift it off, trying not to snag on anything. There we go. And off it goes. Now we can see inside that the expansion has to go down in here, but we also have to route to our ribbon cables which are hiding underneath this black plastic piece here. So I'm going to move the carriage to the far end. I'm going to press in this plastic piece here and that'll release like that. Now I can pull the ribbon out and release the ribbon for the carriage. And if I want to, I'll also take out the cartridge here so I don't damage the ribbons. And also then I got a space I can just kind of tuck this back over here. I still got to get this black plastic cover off as well though. To do that, there is, really there's no tabs. You just kind of got to bend from the front here. 
There is tabs. I'm sorry. I'm a liar. There we go. That didn't break. Trust me there. And there we go. And with a bit of strange acrobatics, you are able to get this removed. Come on. There we go. While we're in here, I want to point out the Intel 8088 is hiding right here. Let me zoom in on that. Right down in here is a single Intel 8088 CPU. And then we have this set of ROMs over here. There's more ROMs and there's static RAM that's battery backed and that makes up the entire system. Power distribution and driving of the, print, of the printing assembly is done over here. And then we have these two connectors hiding over here, which are doing our expansion capabilities. And I'm going to go now and let's see. So those are hardwares. There's our board. Instructions for the board here is to remove the knockout, which has already been removed from the back here. And then the board should just kind of drop in just like that. Does it snap in at all? No, it doesn't seem to snap in. Can we go in? There we go. There. All right, so now it's in there, but now we have to make the other connections. So in the accessory bag, we have our two ribbon cables, which have been very nicely uh, shaped for us. We also have two shorter ribbon cables. There's only one expansion set here, so I'm assuming these cables would allow you to bridge over into what was in here, and then these cables somehow routed somewhere. You know what? I'm not actually sure. I don't have the installation instructions for this at hand. So that goes in like that. But we have to power this thing as well. The ribbon cable that comes for powering this is this doohickey right here. And unfortunately for us, it's only a one position connector. The upgrade kit, which has parts flying around, comes with this cable. This cable will, if I can get this oriented correctly, uh, yes, this cable plugs into the power supply, and then with that, now you have three power terminations, one for the disk controller, one for our middle interface, which I'm just gonna continue to say, this is probably where the parallel interface is gonna live, and then one here for our VGA display. This is gonna take a moment to get that plugged in there, don't worry about it. Now I'm speeding up the installation process here just to move things along. Otherwise, even though I only had one page of the installation instructions for this adapter, it was drop the cart in, attach a screw, attach a little couple of cables, attach grounding straps, and just make sure everything was nicely tucked away. In fact, what I've done here is I've taken all of our extra work or extra spare parts here and our tube of labels that we're not gonna use, and they're just stored at the back side of the wheel rider here. Um, they won't cause ventilation issues. They aren't gonna get in the way of the carriage, but now we're put ready to put this thing back together again. I've already taken and the uh, covers here and I put those back on. The carriage has now been reconnected. All I have to do is just snap the lid on. The lid's a little bit tricky to get back on. Simply because of that stupid guide here for the scale on the front, I just need to remember to work underneath it. Well, at the same time, remember those stupid platen levers? Yeah, those are in the way. This really does suck. Here, let me put this in the middle. Okay, and is this closed or open? There we go. So I'll just drop it around the indicator. See if I can guide everything through. Figure out what I'm snagging on. There we go. And then everything here just should just snap into place. There we go. All right, and now we're ready to go with our floppy drive here. And I'm gonna plug this in. Does that just go? Yes. Like that. And that should be it. So now I get to go grab my laptop again, and I'm gonna bring it up as a monitor, and we're gonna see on the first switch on, did I blow this thing up or not, and does it work? There is no jumpers on this thing. How does it just know that the floppy drive is attached? We'll find out. Like, all right, now we're back together here. I've got everything plugged in. I've got the laptop here, it's recording as well, so I can see what it's doing. 
I don't know if this is gonna work. It might just blow up in our faces. All right, here we go. Finger on the switch. Three, two, one. Didn't immediately explode. Let's see if it just initializes here. And off she goes. Okay, oh, and I heard the floppy drive. By the way, I have gone and I've recapped this floppy drive. This is a, this is an Alps um, floppy mechanism inside of here. It's the exact same 720 kilobyte thing that you're gonna find in some of the IBM PS2s. So to recap it, you gotta do it, otherwise these don't work. Uh, oh, and I forgot to put the cartridge in. So I'll just lift this open. And I'll drop that in there. Okay, so we are cleared storage again because there's no battery here. So I am going to recall what I read when I was looking through the manual just a couple of minutes ago here. So before we start uh, storing anything, we need to store it as, let's see here. Uh, first off, we got to load our paper in. Uh, there we go. in close that down I'll go like that uh, we have a floppy disk here so I'm going to insert that into the drive now I'm gonna go with our menu here and it says diskette down there in the corner now so it does see it so I'll hit that uh, this is not formatted yet so I'm just gonna hit prepare Insert diskette and press carriage return to prepare. Okay, so do that. And it just started. This will be lost. Uh, mm -hmm. Sure, whatever. We'll go with that. And away it goes. And I can hear it. Hold on. Let me get my microphone right up against this here. Okay, so I'm assuming this is going to take a couple of minutes here to format. So I'll get right back to you once this is done formatting. All right, and that seems to have taken a sweet long time to get done, but it's done now. It's asking for a diskette title. Uh, sure, this is a, a test. It's busy, preparation complete. Okay, so now I get to type out my job. So we're going to, normally, as it turns out, if you want to do a store here, so it's code store, or it's just store, there we go. Enter storage number, so we're gonna do location one. So now you see store has turned on, and that means if I type a document, and of course I screwed that one up immediately. Uh, there you go, uh, and now I wanna save that, so I'll hit the store button again, and that's now saved it to internal memory. If I want to play that back, I have two things I can do here. First off, I wanna review it, I'll hit the menu key, I'll go to directory, and there it is right there. It's in memory location one. So sure, I'm going to, okay, I can't hit enter, can I play it? Yes. And then that just typed out the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Okay, and I'm going to go back on that one there. So let's save a document to the floppy drive for this. I'm going to do store. And now I want to do plus and we'll do one. And that's now saying it's going to be going to diskette storage instead of internal typewriter storage. And it said diskette's busy, so now it's ready. And now if I were to do this, uh, we'll do That was a capital B I put in there. H E. No. And I want to save that there, so I'll now hit store. And it's writing that to the floppy disk. And it's done. All right, so if I want to go back and review that it's on the disk, we'll go to menu here. We go to diskette, and I want to do a directory. It's busy with the diskette, and there it is sitting at the top there, the quick round box jumped over the lazy dog. And from that point there, I, it looks like I can, I can 
continue working on it, I believe. Yes, it lets me go right back to where I was working on the document, but instead I want to play this out. Oh, what do I want there? Uh, enter storage number. So again, we'll do plus one. Oh, I didn't like that. What does it want? Uh, I've forgotten where it was. Okay, well that's easy enough. So what we'll do is we'll just go to diskette again. I'll do directory. And that's sitting there. And this time I'll just hit play. And it won't do it. Why not? I see. Okay, now I remember what was going on here. Okay, so I have to hit the type and screen here, which is simply, you can't really print back in this mode what you have on the screen. So I'll hit that. It'll cycle me out over to a different, out to that, where I guess you know, I can now type all I want. That's not what I want to do. So I'll hit enter. And that beep there was because spell check is on. If I hit spell or hit code and one, that'll turn off spell checker. So it'll shut that up on the beeping. But I want to play that back, remember. So now what I'll do is play storage number plus one. And now it's ready, reading to the diskette. And there we go. That was the document there that I had previously wanted to print out. And I know it's not the same as the first one of the quick brown fox because I remember I bolded the T on it. So there we go. I have now quite easily added um, floppy disk get storage to this Wheelwriter 50 series two. It does add a lot more functionality to it. My question is now, however, what format is this in? Can I now go to my computer and well, you know, read it into any sort of word processing program and work with it there, or better yet, can I make a document and then export it to this floppy disk and then read it back onto here? I haven't actually tested that yet. Hey folks, so it's a little bit later on after I made the video here and I wanted to really double check to make sure that maybe you can read these floppies in a regular PC. And the answer to that one is kind of. So here's the desktop right now. And if I ha uh, go and check on the floppy disk, it does see something on the drive. But for both of them, these are files that, there we go. Um, like this is unusable. There's nothing there I can use. Uh, same goes with this. Like I can't even remotely see the text that's on there. So it is encoding and saving them in a format that's not, it's not a raw text file. There's extra formatting going on in here. Uh, if someone is able to uh, take the time to figure out or does if they know what program, if at all, is available for the PC that lets you both uh, read these floppies on the PC and then um, write your own documents to them for use in the typewriter, uh, I'd love to hear it. Again, leave something down below and I'll take a look at it later. But one thing I can now definitely do is that this little label that fell off that originally said that it had the diskette option installed, I can now go and put that back in hiding just right down here. And I do hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this educating. If you were looking to install this yourself, you didn't have the documentation. Uh, I got quite lucky and found that one page. And if you want to see more of this, uh, just leave a comment down below. But until next time, have a good one. <laughs>